Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm down the beach at Silly O'Clock. Come down here at sunrise to take some pinhole photographs and use this uh, KNF tripod real down low, like I said a little while ago on one of my videos. So I've got the LaRue 66 pinhole camera sitting there. I've got a roll of Ilford Pan F50 inside and I'm not going to change the tripod position at all. I'm just going to mill around here, and get some real low, low down shots, real close up to these stones. And with the pinhole camera, everything should be in focus. It is a bit soft, the pinholes, and it is what it is. But um, I'm just working out some metering at the moment. Uh, let me do this and I'll come back to you. Whoa, I'm so cold. My hands are freezing. I forgot my gloves. I keep touching this tripod and this one I'm holding at the moment. I've got my uh, pinhole camera sitting down there on that KNF tripod. And I'm doing the first exposure I did. I think I don't look completely nauseous and metering up on that. But uh, with reciprocity, I'm looking at 24 seconds on most of this stuff. So I'm just going to keep the camera where it is on that tripod, mill around all around these stony areas and get all these low shots in and just see see what I get. So uh, I'm not going to spend too long down here because it is bitterly cold this morning. Whoa. My only trouble is I didn't bring any anything for the uh, for the tripod legs on the wet sand. So if I want to do any stuff for the wet sand, certainly for that long, uh, the tripod whoop, the tripod's going to start sinking in a little bit. So I don't know if they were blurry. I'm getting wet. Bugger it. <laughs> That's my well, it's like 12 shots taken. I'll tell you what, I'm so cold. My hands feel like they're gonna literally drop off. They're like lumps of wood. Oh, bitterly cold this morning down the beach. And I didn't bring my gloves, so you can imagine freezing cold. My hands are cold and then the tripods are cold. I'm trying to pick them up, my hands are nearly sticking to them. Um, <laughs> and it, I think it makes it harder photography when you're cold and uncomfortable it makes it more difficult to think especially when you have to keep getting your phone out and working out you know reciprocity failures and stuff um, but on the flip side of things there's a bloke over there sleeping on a bench yeah, he's got a sleeping bag around him bless him and I thought to myself blimey and I'm sitting there complaining that I'm cold you know poor sod I slipped him a few quid in his little shoe so um, hopefully he'll wake up and get himself something something warm to drink or eat. Right, let's get back and uh, put this film into uh, Ilford's ID11 and then get in the dark room and see what we've got. I'm hoping I've got some nice pics. I hope it hasn't been a waste of time this morning because um, I did get up early <laughs> to come down here and get these photographs. Beautiful sunrise. You saw the sunrise, that was beautiful. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna get back and warm up, it's so cold.
So I'm in my darkroom now and I've been mucking about with uh, one of the negatives. I'll show you that in a moment. But first, uh, pinhole photography. You either love it or you hate it. I love pinhole photography. I mean, it's great fun. It just makes a change to get out with something very simple. Uh, you know, the only thing you've got to do working out in your head is just the exposures and the reciprocity failures um, on, on your film. But some of the long exposures and the prints that you get back from pinhole photography is fantastic. And uh, the other day, it's surprisingly how close you can get as well with pinhole. The other day, I was playing around with my pinhole camera, trying to get as close as I could to one of my cameras uh, to take photographs of it and uh, it's surprising how close you can get and how wide and get everything in I'll just throw up some of the scans that I did from that shoot show you guys what I was up to there and then we'll get back in the dark room and we'll make the uh, prints from this morning shoot So these are the negatives, they've come out really nice. Uh, this Ilford Pan F50 is such a nice film, even in that ID11, there's hardly any grain at all. This is the first one I did where I miscalculated my exposures and you can see it's overexposed, but still workable. And then I did the same shot with the right exposure this time and then started to nail it from there. There was a blank frame there, I don't know what happened to that one. And like I said, the rest of the shots, I just went along, didn't change the tripod position, just carried on all load down shots. I've got some nice photographs. There's two there the same. Um, I felt like one of them, um, I jogged the camera, so I took another one, and that was the final one of the lamp. But yeah, the negatives come out really nice. This one I really like, so I'm going to go ahead and do some test strips on this and see what we can come up with. So I've just done some tests on one of the negatives that I really liked, which was the uh, water coming over the stones. It was a slow, silky looking um, photograph. So these are the two uh, test strips that I'd done. First of all, I went to F8, uh, two and a half grade filter for two second increments, two, four, six. It just got too dark. I needed to play more if I needed any dodging and burning. So I just stopped the lens down to F11 and did the same again. And that time it just gave me a bit more to play with. As you can see, I've got detail uh, all the way up to two, four, six, eight seconds, whereas eight seconds here, I lost it. So two, four, six, eight, 10 and 12. Uh, I decided that I've got six seconds to play with or maybe a four second uh, split grade. So um, I need to have a little look, we'll put some more test strips on the, under the enlarger and see where we're gonna go along these times. So from those test strips, I decided then to do three more test strips going right across the uh, baseboard there, showing the whole image, just so I can see where I can go on the on a print when I start to make it. Uh, this one here was at F11, six seconds with a two and a half grade filter. That's a two and a half grade filter there that I used, Ilford Multigrades. Uh, so it's a two and a half grade filter, straight off for six seconds. I just found it was a bit too dark. So I went to four seconds, and I'll tell you why I found it dark. I'm trying to make, you know, I don't want it to go muddy. I want to get some pop in it somewhere. And I'm looking around this area to try and highlight um, where the C is. You can see that there. Uh, so then I went to four seconds. I thought, what does four seconds do? And that has brightened it right up. I'm not, I don't care about this area. I don't care about the sky. I'm just looking at the middle of the print because I can always burn these in if I need to. And that's possibly where I'm going to be going. I then decided to do a split grade just to see what split grade filtering did for me. So two and a half contrast there for four seconds. I split it between contrast five and a contrast zero. And each one got two seconds. So uh, contrast zero for two seconds, contrast five for two seconds. And it weren't really doing much for me. Nothing that the two and a half grade wasn't doing. So I'm quite happy to go with these times here. So all I need to do now is place a piece of paper down on the baseboard and pretty much another test, but a full size piece of paper just to see where I'm going with a full size print. And if you like film photography and pinhole photography as well, check out Martin Henson's YouTube channel. Great guy uh, up the north of England there. And he's got a fantastic channel all about film photography. Does lots of stuff. Very knowledgeable guy. I'll put a link in the description for you guys. And uh, yeah, check him out obviously after this video. Right, so I've got a nice big fat dodge tool there. So um, my idea is just to print the whole paper at two and a half grade filter for uh, four seconds, like the test strip, and then I'm just going to burn a little tiny bit 
of the uh, sand area in and a little tiny bit of the sky almost giving you a bit of a vignette feel so let's uh let's go for it So that's got to where our test strips are. All I need to do now is just fill a little bit in at the bottom. So using this dodge tool here, it's just going to stop light reaching the middle part of the print because that's where I want the eye to be drawn to once it's framed. Just turn the light on, no time, and I'll bounce it and count it in. One, two, three, four, and off. So there's about five seconds there. Uh, burning the sky and burning the bottom of the sand area. Let's develop this and see what it looks like. And I'm using Ilford's multi-grade deluxe pearl paper. It's quite a nice paper. You often see me using the Kentmere, but I like chopping and changing around. Um, but this paper is very nice. And I'm using Ilford's multi-grade developer as well. I've got fresh fix and fresh stop. So, fingers crossed, nothing should go wrong. Maybe a couple of little dust spots here and there, but that's not gonna bother me too much. It is what it is, and this is looking lovely. Just that bit of vignetting down the bottom of the top really makes the image pop, certainly in the center, which is where I want the eye to be drawn to. I'm not worried about the wave breaker wood on the side being silhouetted or darkened. Um, you know, it kind of adds to the print. I don't want it too busy. I don't want the print to look too busy so there's so much going on because it's just a very simplistic, uh, simplicity or simple, sim simplistic, is that, no, not simplistic. What's the bloody word? You know what I mean. <laughs> I'm so close yet so far. I love it, the way I vignetted it in, the way I made the centre of the image pop, the photograph looked nice, the horizon's nice and straight. Oh look, just a little tiny bit of hair going on here and here and here. I can blend those in with uh, some spot, uh, spot dyes, but uh, there's one big one there. So that's no problem, I'll just have to take the negative out and, uh, and see what these are, see if I can get rid of them. I managed to get that uh, the most of that hair off but there's a slight there is a slight mark on the emulsion but you know you're not going to see it from a distance so I'm really happy the way that's come out also a little bit less burning around here so um, yeah not a bad print from a pinhole camera look at that So the final prints came out really nice. I've got three of these guys. They're gonna go on my website. I'll put a link in the description. If you wanna purchase one of these prints, there's only gonna be three available. So if you're interested and you wanna support the channel, jump on the description. I'll put a link in there to my website. They'll be on there if you wanna purchase these worldwide. Um, I'm really happy with the way they've come out. You know, a little bit of testing, a little bit of playing around, a little bit of trouble with the neg, managed to get that off. And uh, they've come out really nice. So I've just put that print back over there to finish off drawing. And uh, yeah, what a great session that was down at the beach this morning. Got up really early. I love shooting pinhole photography. It's just so much fun, uh, you know, to get out and not worry too much about anything. Just, just point and shoot. Hopefully you've got it in the right direction. And sometimes you come back with some real amazing stuff. I found that in the past I can get really close with pinhole and it's surprisingly close and still get wide shot. Don't forget, check out Martin Henson's YouTube channel. I'll put a link in the description. He does some great pinhole photography work using a five by four pinhole uh, camera as well. So if you're interested in that, I'll stick a link in the description. Check out his YouTube channel. Give him a thumbs up and, and a subscribe. Uh, he's, he's mustard. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Got to say thanks a lot to all the people that support my channel. Send me stuff. And uh, you guys that support me on Patreon and YouTube members area as well. I'm 
starting to put out more stuff on Patreon and also the YouTube members area. So if you are a Patreon or a YouTube member, you're going to start seeing some more stuff in the darkroom off of the uh, normal YouTube channel. So look out for that, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll catch you next time.